Hey, I'm here with Special Edition NYCC with Brian JL Glass. Okay, Mr. Glass. Oh, tell us about the, the, the nice spate of works we have here. Oh, well, everything here on this table here at lovely New York Special Edition is written by me. I'm a comic book writer. I've won a couple of Harvey Awards. That's very exciting. Uh, but the, the big attraction is right behind us, Furious, my new Dark Horse series that just completed her first arc uh, two months ago. She debuted in January, and uh, she's who I'm pretty much the most excited about. Yeah, I'm getting a very Invincible-esque kind of feel. Uh, well, we're, it, we do have the touches of the ultraviolence. Uh, I'd say we're less sci-fi. Um, Furious is the story of a uh, former child star who grew up to become one of those tabloid trash, crash and burn celebrities who then gains superpowers and believes somehow that by becoming a superhero she can redeem uh, the nightmare of her past that eh, she feels responsible for. So, how exactly does punching bank robbers in the junk redeem years and years of cocaine abuse? <laughs> Well, she's trying to deal with her anger issues. She actually believes that... I don't, I don't, I don't see, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't... Uh, her, her failure to do it responsibly is where all the drama and the pathos enter the tale. She's a conflicted character. It's hard when you've had a whole lifetime, well, a decade or so, of being an irresponsible mess, and then one day go... I am not going to be that irresponsible mess anymore because when I am, I punch people through walls. And, but enough about your parents. <laughs> Mom, Dad, I love you. So let's tell me about some of your other works. Ah, oh, well, I'm also known for The Mice Templar. Uh, the Mice Templar is a comic series uh, I originally co-created with uh, Mike Avon Oming of Powers fame. And uh, we've been uh, producing Mice Templar for a, almost the last decade, which blows my mind. It's been that long. But we are telling one big epic uh, mouse, mouse with swords epic saga uh, that we've kind of described as a Game of Thrones, but on a really small scale. Uh, I like to say we have none of the sex, but twice the betrayals and beheadings. This is kind of ironic considering how mice procreate. <laughs> that, that all happens in the gutters or outside the panels. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> one thing that fairly often does happen yes. with a uh, fantasy style series is that there is a problem people have with the whole evil races idea. How do you get around that? Ah, well, that, that was one of the challenges we faced at the very, very beginning, that neither Mike nor me wanted to fall into that same trap. We, we didn't want a world where, oh, mice are inherently good because, well, they're the heroes and they're the mice, and, oh, rats are inherently bad because, oh, rats are just the bad race. Also, they're wearing a lot of leather, and everyone knows. That's, that's, that's code word for, for I'm evil. Not to me. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, Come on. races. Yeah. Wow, boy, you're real. Now, this is my turn to be all. You should have seen the outtakes. They were disastrous. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, how we've gotten around it is uh, th there are incredibly evil mice in this story. There are betrayal mice, be betrayer mice in this tale. And while the predominance of the rats are kind of they they have a they have a culture that loans itself to evil because of those that are currently in power the book does uh, in fact uh, within our our very last volume we introduce a, uh, a rat that is uh, somewhat on trial because he he's been labeled a mouse sympathizer and he is uh, he's not getting with the program of quote his people. He sees uh, the the rising of this mouse hero that the story has been chronicling as an opportunity to actually end this generational hatred of one race against another. And when various aspects of the the past has, have been revealed in the tale, you learn that wow. Well, some rats 
have really strong reasons for hating mice, for what mice did to them when the mice used to be in power. And so the, the series is exploring this, this cyclical idea of how the, these horrible patterns of I hate you because you're different uh, just get perpetuated uh, generationally. And at some point it takes people to stand up and say, I'm not going to perpetuate the cycle or flip the cycle. Now it's our turn to be in power. No, those cycles of hatred just have to be broken and stopped. And that's one of Mice Templar's many, many themes. It explores that. Oh, that's really great. So you also have reached uh, other kinds of fame on the internet. Uh, you want to tell uh, us a little bit about that? Ah, uh, yes. I'm, I'm responsible for, uh, well, I, I guess I, I have to include the artist as well. We, we're co-responsible uh, for a meme. Uh, I wrote Thor, Crown of Fools. And uh, there, there's a portion in the story where Via a, a magical enchantment, characters come face to face with that which their heart most desires. And anyone that has seen any of the uh, Thor movies knows that what, what troubles Thor's heart the most is that he has lost his brother. And so, of course, the, the enchantment, the evil enchantment reveals that Thor's deepest desire, well, is obviously Loki. So. Uh, this, these uh, three panels uh, took on a life of their own out of context as Marvel, through me, finally came clean about the desire of Thor's heart. If you look it up close, just look at the way he holds that hammer. Uh, I admit, brother, it has always been... <laughs> I can't quote my own work here. But yes, this, this has taken on yet another life of its own. So I'm the furious guy, the Mice Templar fantasy guy, <clears throat> and I'm this guy. <laughs> it says Thor guy. That's, uh, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing peak after peak and the valley. Uh, I'm trying to cater to all of my, uh, my audience. I have a wide and diverse audience, and I want something for everyone. <laughs> You've been a, you've you've been a blast. <laughs> this has been great. This is this is E slash <laughs> chuckling uncontrollably. Signing <laughs> off. <laughs>